Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at Rollo May's existential psychology. Now what is existentialism? As human beings we tend to often think about the real meaning of life. We question our understanding of the world around us and also question our place in the world. Now such questions lay the foundation of existential psychology. Our answers to such philosophical questions actually tend to be a reflection of our state of mind. If you are suffering with pain, loss or depression, our answers to such questions actually lead to be gloomy. The aim of existential psychology is to educate people about who they really are and make them aware of the fact that they are responsible for their existence and also for their achievements. It essentially focuses on the meaning of life and people's purpose in life. Existential psychology is an area within psychology which is actually most linked to philosophy. Now, Rollo May was an American psychologist who helped develop and popularize existential psychology. It became mainstream because of May's influence really. The world of existential psychology is vast by the way, it's, it's quite vast. We will learn some in important concepts uh, within this world of existential psychology in this tutorial from the lens provided by Rollo May, but it's not, uh, this isn't a tutorial which will cover every single concept. We're going to look at a lot of concepts and try to simplify them for you so that you get a good understanding of existentialism, okay? Now, the first concept that we're going to look at is Rollo May's stages of development. Now, just like Freud before his time, May believed in human beings going through a developmental cycle through life. But unlike Freud's stages, these are not stages in the traditional sense, okay? May's uh, stages are not quite similar to Freud's stages. Any person of any age can actually get into May's stages and can, can actually get in and out of them, okay? Now let's at look at these actual stages. Innocence. Now this is a stage uh, or a state of mind, so to say, which signifies a lack of will or intention other than the will to survive and to live, okay? So the essence of this stage called innocence is the will to live and survive. So infants for instance live in this stage wherein uh, they only need to do what's necessary to survive. The same would be the case with uh, an animal who kills other animals for food. So that is innocence, yeah? Rebellion. Now this is the state of mind, it's a state of mind like childhood and adolescent stages, yeah, where people seek freedom, but they don't understand the responsibilities that go with them. So that is rebellion. Now, this would be like a child who would often want to go out at night, but actually cannot take care of itself when, uh, if and when trouble looms. Ordinary. Now, this would be like an adulthood stage, wherein people often feel overwhelmed by demanding lifestyles like me and you all the time, I would say. In this state of mind, a person would seek refuge in conforming to norms or in traditional values which, which stop people from doing what he or she actually wants to do, okay? So that's why it's ordinary, it's kind of boring, really. Creative. Now, this state of mind is like that of an ideal adult who is close to self-actualization. So a person in such a state of mind would attribute events to destiny and also be cool and courageous in the, in the face of adversity. There will be no anxiety in such a person in times of crisis and there will be sheer will to come out of any sort of a crisis situation. And speaking of anxiety, that is the next concept uh, and a very important concept that we're going to look, look, look at next. So, according to May, anxiety is the cause of every major crisis that we face, be it domestic or professional. Human beings tend to fear uncertainty, as we all know. 
Now this uncertainty could be to do with everyday life events or with the idea of looming death. So May also described the world to be filled with anxiety and one can argue that this is more relevant today than it was back in his day. As the world today is, as we all know, desensitized and depersonalized by computers, television and other technology. Uh, and the COVID situation uh, of 2020-21 is a clear example of how uncertainty can actually lead to anxiety for one and all. Okay, now getting back to May, he clearly distinguished anxiety with fear. Fear is a reaction to a specific event, whereas anxiety can be quite vague. Uh, for example, if you're in the middle of a robbery, uh, you would fear for your safety. But in most parts of uh, the Western world, there is, uh, there is continual anxiety in relation to terrorism in general. So for people are anxious because uh, a terrorist attack can happen any time, really. So that is the difference between anxiety and fear. Now, anxiety can also be of two types, normal anxiety and neurotic anxiety. If an anxiety is proportionate to the threat faced, and does not require the services of defense mechanisms, it is considered to be normal anxiety. Normal anxiety is not intense and that can actually be managed constructively. The other type is neurotic anxiety. And now, neurotic anxiety is uh, intense. It's disproportionate to the, to the threat actually faced and triggers defense mechanisms in individuals. Now, people who suffer neurotic anxieties aren't weak. They just suffer from psychological conflicts resulting from um, mainly from poor childhood relationships or some sort of trauma. Now, if you're confused about what defense mechanisms are, I would recommend that you check my tutorial on Freud's defense mechanisms, which elaborates it further. Now, the next concept we're going to look at is guilt. Now, according to May, we experience guilt when we don't actually work to our abilities or, or when we actually don't fulfill our potential. We can also experience guilt if we ignore our dependence on nature or when we fail to perceive the needs of fellow human beings. Okay, and he also believed that guilt in some form is necessary for good mental health as it helps in bridging the, ba the gap between our behavior and our standards, our expectations. So it's actually important to have some element, some quantity of guilt. Now the next concept to look at is love and the forms of love as proposed by May. Now May believed that love is an essential part of human development. He stated that give, giving and receiving love is as important for us as having a complete personality. So it's really important for our development and our existence. He identified four types of love, sex, eros, philia, and agape. So sex just refers to a biological need to derive satisfaction out of sexual intercourse or by the release of sexual tension in some other way and eros, on the other hand, is the psychological desire to procreate with a loving companion. So eros is essentially making love and sex just refers to sex without love and care. Now philia is the other type of love. It is a feeling of non-sexual friendship between individuals, be it friends, siblings or partners. Now. Eros is actually built on the foundations of philia, okay? And in the absence of philia, there would be no relaxation or friendly companionship in a really passionate couple. Okay, and the last type is agape. So agape is a selfless form of love and care for another person. It is like the, the love between a parent and its offspring. It's... It is a type of love without gain, or you can also call it unconditional love, yeah? And just like Eros and Philia, Agape, uh, uh, sorry, just like Eros needs Philia, 
Philia would also need an element of agape, yeah? So these are all sort of interlinked with one another. But May also believed that all true love has components of all forms of his love. So there is no particular type of uh, pure tool, true love. But uh, what he would actually label as true love would actually be a combination of the various forms of love. He also stated that there are two main sources of anxiety when it comes to love. And these are firstly the expectation of sex in loving relationships and then secondly the emphasis on technique in lovemaking. So that basically dehumanizes or desensitizes the, the actual process of lovemaking in his opinion. Okay. Now the next concept we're going to look at is freedom and also the concept of myths. Now freedom according to May is is the ability to harbor different possibilities of anything in our minds. So even if we are currently unsure which path to choose, freedom is the fact that we actually have a choice to choose any path. He also believed that freedom is the capacity to pause in the face of stimuli from many directions and still choose one path over another. Now, if you look at an example, we, we are fed news, different types of news at all times. And some news can, be, can actually lead us in a particular direction and some other can actually lead us in a completely different direction. And f freedom, according to May, is our choice of actually following whichever direction, ignoring everything else and following whichever direction we believe in. Okay? Now, in terms of myths, May believe that they are essential for us to make sense of life in a senseless world that we live in. As you would know, myths can be considered to be fictional stories or, or stories involving uh, supernatural beings and events. And May believed that myths actually strengthen belief and provide us relief from guilt and neurotic anxiety. So they are really essential in society. He also believed that Western society has lost its myths and is therefore susceptible to things like drugs, cults, superstitions, etc. Now, let's, let's examine the concept of existential psychotherapy. What is existential psychotherapy? Now, Rollo May's work has actually led to the development of existential psychotherapy. Now, the grim reality of our world is that we have a lot of people in this world who suffer from clinical depression, substance dependency, post-traumatic stress, uh, which can result from, from rape, childhood trauma, military combat, or, or, or a lot of other life-threatening experiences. Now, individuals suffering from these and other type of mental health illnesses uh, could possibly respond to existential psychotherapy because existential psychotherapy kind of reinvigorates people and it actually infuses positivity in people. So people who suffer from mental health issues could actually respond to existential psychotherapy and experience heightened self-awareness, self-respect and self-motivation. So it could really offer them a new hope of a fulfilling and complete life. So it is extremely important uh, the development of existential psychotherapy was extremely important and this is one of the reasons why Rollo May is uh, given a lot of credit in the field of psychology. Okay, as I said, the field is quite vast and uh, I've only covered a few topics relating to existential psychology. Nevertheless, I hope uh, these were simplified for you and I thank you very much for your attendance as always and as always. If you like this content, please support this channel, please like all the videos, uh, please subscribe if you're new here, uh, and uh, please keep taking care of yourself and your family. Thank you very much. Take care.